Yay, yeah. welcome aboard. So we're doing yeah. a blab. We're doing an impromptu blab, like no promo, just totally no going for it. I made, Kim, I made Kimbo wait because I was like, I just have to create a quick image in Canva. Yeah. <laughs> because I think when you're going on blab, I like to upload a unique image so that when people look at the replay yeah. mainly, it makes it a lot easier for them to know what the topic is. So today I'm so excited to yeah. be chatting with the Marilyn Monroe lookalike, Kimberly <laughs> Sumner from KimberlySumner.com. Hello, oh, darling. How's proud. your holiday going? My holiday is going well. I've been looking at puppies, as you know, so that's kind of my focus. Some work, some puppies. And it's funny when you put it out there to the universe that you're ready for this puppy to be born, the second puppy breeder came back today and said, um, puppies are in gestation. So now I have two options. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Wow. And we know puppies are quite pricey these days. Are the kids on board with the whole puppy thing or is it mainly your thing? No, the kids are totally on board. What is interesting is husband who wasn't on board, husband now, I took him out to um, see the puppies and he, he's fully on board. <laughs> Even though he's telling me he's not. No, the kids are. The kids are a good age, Nat, because my kids are, um, the twins are 12 and Gabby's 13. So, yeah. Yeah, they've, been, they've waited long enough. They've waited long enough. It's high time <laughs> for a puppy. Well, in this house, okay. I just posted on Neighborly for my daughter and yeah. in my private Meadowbank Mums yeah. Facebook group that I started. Um, at the daughter looking for um, dog walking opportunities. Is she doing that? Money for her own puppy. So, What sort of puppy does she want? He wants a cavoodle or something like that. Yeah. Something I'm impressed. Too. So she's going to do that fundraising. Yeah. They, she needs to make half, half the money. Is that what yeah. you do? Is that what surprisingly, you do for puppies is not our to topic for today. No, yeah. So sorry. Anyone who's listening, we're not talking puppies. So um, that's just a, that's a little precursor. But that's what happens when you come on Blab. Anything <laughs> is possible. Anything, Anything can happen. Hey, I'm Anything just going to do a little bit of... Um, like navigation. So for yeah. uh, uh, anyone listening to the replay, if you do yeah. come on Blab yeah. and anyone that joins us, just to navigate yourself, if you go along yeah. the top, you can see who's live on the call. And if you hover on their face, it will come up with their profile, which is of course oh, cool. linked to Twitter. So it'll bring in their Twitter profile. You can then decide if you want to follow them or not. So it's like a great networking opportunity, which is really yeah, good. It is. A great opportunity to connect with other people. It's so like live networking. It is. It's like live virtual. Networking. Yeah. I know that Fiona, who's here, also has a Blab show. So we might bring her on yeah. later to tell us about what she's up to and her Blab show. And I've got my Inspire Hire Blab show, which is on yeah. Tuesdays at 1030. Um, or if you're in America or anywhere else, Pacific time, it I think it's 10, um, 1.30 must, in the afternoon on a Monday. On a Monday. Yeah. That's a good time for it, Matt. Like that. Or 3.30, yeah. depending on where you live. Yeah. So let's get into today's topic. So what we've chosen to talk about. Kimberly, tell me about it. Alignment versus action. Good. How much we do versus making space That's to receive. receive. What, does I, that mean? What, what does that mean, Nat? So what that means is you, it's been such an incredible journey for me who has always been this do, do, doer and doing more and thinking that doing more actually makes things happen faster and realizing that it's actually – if your action isn't inspired in an energetic place that feels really good and energetically, if you're not feeling good with your action, then all of your action is misguided and actually gets you in a place that you're working very hard. But really, if you can imagine, say, on a treadmill, like a little mouse or a hamster or something, and you're not going anywhere because energetically you're not in a really cool place to receive. Uh, so something I've been working on a lot and I'm actually listening a lot to Esther Hicks. Have you heard of her? No. Uh, she's, a, she's a really cool um, lady um, who talks a lot about this, a lot through the States. And um, she talks about getting yourself in an energetic space that you actually put it out there to the universe with your desire, with what you're wanting. Mm. But then, of course, you need to take the action because it's not, let's face it, it's not all just sitting there going like this and meditate we have to do the work but if we're doing that work in a space where we're not excited and we're not joyous and we're not curious and we're not anticipating with delicious desire if we're not feeling like that then it doesn't matter how hard we work Ooh, so, I love that. Anticipating with delicious desire. And, and that just came to me. Anticipating so what you're with saying is it's not yeah. just a matter of creating one's vision board and then just like waiting around. You actually need to put it out to the universe, but also take some, some action steps. Yeah. You and me are a good combination because you're so good and you've taught me so much about doing the action steps and you've got to do, you know, you've got to do the, um, 
the work and you've got to, it's really important to have you need to be in progress and you need momentum and going forward but if that momentum and going forward isn't i guess grounded or doesn't have a foundation of feeling um if you're not feeling supported because you're actually not supporting yourself if you're not feeling a delicious desire of what you're wanting to create because you're trying to create something that you sh think you should want you know if you're if you are not in a space where what you're what you're wanting isn't heart, you know, vibrationally a match for you, then you put it all out there. But hey, remember that program, I'm digressing, but I'm just thinking of an analogy and it's a Kiwi analogy, but it was an American program, Play School. Do you remember Play School? No. Nat? Okay. I remember so there, Sesame Street. I like Sesame Street. Okay, <laughs> well remember, okay, let's come to Sesame Street and they had letters each week. Um, and numbers each week, essentially you're putting it out there, let's say a particular number, and remember you've got to match the number to the, you know, you've got to match the number to the number. So if you're putting out a number five, but energetically you're putting out a number seven, you're not at a match. Right. So it's just getting yourself in the frequency where energetically you are connecting. And I'm not saying that to be really woo-woo. It's not just about, you know, putting this vibe out there, and that's all it's about. You've got to do the action, but you have to mix this with a vibration that means you're in alignment. Otherwise, you just work really hard. Yeah, and so I guess a lot of what it is is not just working for the sake of yeah. working or doing for the sake of doing or being no. busy for the sake of being busy. Yeah, Putting it out there. And feeling curious. Yeah. And like calling yourself on it when you're getting in the way of yourself because you are... Uh, because in that space you're being too hard on yourself and you're saying it should be looking like this or it should have happened by this. There's no point in having desire if in the space of having that desire of what you're wanting to achieve, if that makes you feel good, be feel bad because you haven't achieved it yet. So it's trusting that simply by putting it out there, you've created that desire. Now you need to get in an energetic space to be a match to it. Uh, you've got to do the work so you know there are things that need to happen. But if you're just doing the work and you are not feeling great about it, then maybe you need to reconsider what you're going for. Um, and that's when a pivot might come in about in business. So in terms of a really practical example, because um, not wanting to get you know too spacey or too impractical with this, um, if you find that something in business, say you've created a, a program in business and it's not filling your heart with joy in the delivery well you've got to wonder why are you doing it because then you'll be working really hard and you it's hard to get the clients in that space and it's hard for the money to come easily versus when you're in flow and flow comes when you're in that energetic matching space you know what i'm saying I do. And it reminds me this yeah. morning, actually, I did a, um, a Zoom call with the girls in my mastermind group that yeah. we had about 16 people there live on the Zoom. And I was telling them some of the tips yeah. I've learned at social media marketing world. And I was just throwing out like talking about yeah. Facebook Live and Snapchat and yeah. this new app called Bizabo. And I was also talking about YouTube and and writing an epic blog post to grow your yeah. MailChimp list, etc. But I said, girls, what I, I preempted that. And I also came back at the at the end I did full circle and I said what I don't want is for you to get overwhelmed with all these things you should or could be doing yeah I want you to come back with me to like what is the re result that you are getting that you get for your client like what is the the biggest result they're going to get with working with you and really focusing on on what is your goal what are you trying to achieve not trying to be everywhere and on every social media platform so it's like I was almost not in your words exactly, but trying to, I think, bring them back or align, realign them or it's at least remind them. Realigning what you're them. actually trying you to do and not yeah. let them, try not to let them fall into overwhelm around the social media and the opportunities and, and all of the places they could, should, and feel like they, sh you know, should be. Absolutely, Nat. That's exactly what you were doing because it's like those are all the tools in a box and you can use any of those tools, but you don't have the time honestly, as women, we don't have the time to use all of those tools. So which is the tool when we use it, we still feel full of excitement and anticipation and serving our clients, you know? Um, I was with a client this morning and we were looking at, I'd been considering helping her with video and she just wasn't resonating with video. Video wasn't her thing. But being out with her clients live, she just absolutely loved that. And 
her face lit up when she was talking about that. So she was in that space mm. energetically of feeling really good when she was live. She's someone who enjoys being live the whole time. So that's the business model for her. Yeah. You know, it's it's the business model. It's not video. That's not just because it's worked for someone else doesn't does, doesn't mean it will work for you. And you have to listen to your heart and how you are feeling in the journey of um, in that journey. And so in the case for her, which would be really cool, is when she is actually live at her event or whatever it is she does with people, is getting somebody else to take some video of her, but it's not her performing for the camera because she's actually performing for the people, but capturing a little bit on video just really for marketing purposes, you know, so that other people that are thinking about attending her event or working with her can get the feeling without having to be in the room and then they get in the room. That, that's awesome. I'm going to I'm going to mention that one to her. Thank you for that. Um, that's exactly right. So, I guess why is this important? Because I think, in terms of alignment versus action, I think as women we can always, not always, I'll pull that back. But I think it's really easy to feel we're not doing a good enough job, or we could be doing better, or just that whole thing. I hear from lots of people, including myself. You know, I have to tap myself on the shoulder. We're not. I'm not enough. You know, and that's not an energetic space which makes great things happen. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The energetic space that makes th- great things ca- happen is I'm enjoying this journey. Um, I'm really excited about where I'm going. I'm eager for more of it to be happening. I love serving my clients. This way hasn't worked so well for me, so I'm happy to try a new way. I'm excited about the process of discovery, those sorts of things. I'd love and- to talk also. Sorry, carry on. No, that's it. I'd love, I was just thinking, you yeah. made me think of this as well. I think for the alignment, it's alignment ourselves in our business, but also in terms of collaboration, right? In terms of who we align ourselves with, because quite often in business, um, one of the things I definitely promote is that people collaborate with other people, whether it be simply doing a giveaway together or something as more, yes. more committal, I suppose, yes. as doing a co-hosted webinar or a co-hosted live event. When you're putting yourself and your image up with someone, you are in a sense aligning yeah. yourself with them. And so I think as a business owner, it's important to be really clear on who you are and what you're about and making sure that anybody you align yourself with um, absolutely is, it makes sense with your business. It's going to be a positive feeling and a positive reflection. What do you think of that? I think there's t- the, that's absolutely right. And it's alignment with from a practical point of view that you have a good crossover in what you bring to each other and the value and how you're supporting each other, that you have a crossover with that your audience is a similar a, a match in the target audience, but also what you just said there, there's alignment in that you enjoy working with each other because if you don't, it doesn't matter how aligned you are sort of from a headspace, if you don't enjoy connecting, you don't bring the positive energy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, so you and me, we're just blabbing here and um, we just set this up and it's fun and whatever happens, it's it makes for a space that in your day you feel good about your journey of doing business, right? Indeed. And we have to feel yeah. good about the journey because it is it is a journey with, with peaks and troughs. It's a real journey of, of peaks and troughs. So you must have seen that. So you've just been at the social media um as the networking ambassador, where, where was it, Matt? So it was in San Diego in California. San Diego. Oh, San Diego. So you would have seen lots of people on their journey and at varying stages of success, right? Yes. Yeah, and, but it's interesting yeah. that whole conference, and this is one of the one of the yeah. many, you know, one of the suggestions that I gave to the organizers was that they it would be great to talk a little bit more about not work life balance, but the more holistic look at. Um, running a business, but given the fact that a lot of people in the room are not running a business, they are the social media managers for big companies. Yes. But even then, you still want to think about work versus you know hustle and flow, right? Whereas a lot yeah. of the focus of the event is really about how to and tools, and it's not so much about the lifestyle side of, of work and business. Exactly. I mean, really, why are you doing it? If you're not here to, uh, I mean, everyone's got different reasons why they're why they're doing it but if it's not ticking off things like it's your deeper purpose and you get a huge amount of joy from doing it and it's connecting you with great people and you feel it's making the planet better for your children and uh it's make or it's not it's making the planet better for 
your friends and your family and your legacy, why are you doing it? Really, you know? So it's not just about those tools of being really good at your job and meeting your goals and making lots of money. There you're an enabler to do something deeper and connect with your energetic purpose and vibration of why you're here. That's, I think that's a really big part of it. So if you can get the two in alignment, um, I, what's really interesting I find for myself, and I'm guessing, I'm guessing this is similar for you, Nat, is the more you're in alignment, the more both with your own purpose and with people you're connecting with, it makes it easier you actually have more energy, right? You have more energy to do the things you want to do. You, you're invigorated by what you're doing. Yeah, like it just yeah. flows more, I think, it, it rather than fight, feeling like you're fighting. Yeah, and then within that space of alignment versus action, uh, what I want to honor is that as women, and I help women and you help women, so we're both, this is something that's pretty universal to our themes, is that uh, women do business a different way. They're just by nature of being women, they're connected into the caregiving relationships within the family, be that children, partners, husbands, loved ones, elderly parents, however. So our energy is more, um, it's spread. That's at the back of our minds. So we need to support ourselves a lot because we're doing more than a business. We're caregiving for people around us. And so we need to care for ourselves. And any, if you just go look in your garden, I know you love going outside, Nat, and so I'm just looking outside here. I've got some bees outside um, growing, making some gorgeous honey for me, is that uh, any great tree, you know, if you look at a great plant that grows into a tree, it has to take roots, it supports itself, and it also goes through a regenerative cycle. So it's not, female energy isn't really just linear. Uh, do you know what I mean by that? It has cycles where you've got to honor to be really in a space where you can be intuitive and where you can support people. You also must have a day or two where you just completely chillax, right? You've got to take that space. However, you can do that in your week, right? I love, I love the, the different, you and I are aligned in terms of our goals, but the languaging is so interesting. You're talking about linear and feminine and I talk about hustle and flow, right? But it's the same thing. <laughs> it's the same thing. So what I mean by that is, for example, I reckon a woman's day is a bigger day than a man's day. You might be do, considering what your children have for school, what are their considerations, um, how they're getting on with their friends. When they're older, you'll be considering their, um, you'll be considering how they're doing out in the world. You're looking at your partner. You're considering your wider family members. And all of that, you're considering managing the household. So your day is a very long day. And you're considering all the time different conversations going on in your head. As that's on top of your business. So you have to have some time in the weekend where you're allowing yourself just to completely um, unwind. It's really important. And many of us, uh, you know, are also con concerned, not concerned, that's not what I want, uh, mindful of what the family's eating as well. I know your husband, he's awesome. He's the chef. But a lot of women are doing the cooking too. So they're considering how the, you know, how the household meals are going. And it just means you've got to look after, take those moments, take those moments to go and get a little manicure or take those moments for yourself to, um, you know, give yourself treats. Women yeah, and awesome. so receive the wording that to we've receive. used. To how much we we do versus how much we receive and receiving yeah. in terms of, I, for me, I talk about give, give, get, right? And yeah. and that part of that is about getting your energy back again and giving time and giving space and giving love to yourself as well as dishing it out all the time to the kids and the, and the, the Cocker yeah. Spaniel puppy and the, and the yeah. husband. And the, the husband and the grocery store. Even if you're not cooking, you know, you're buying, the, you're often... Um, you're purchasing the groceries or, or whatever. So receiving is about allowing yourself to energetically restore. Yeah, it's nice. allowing yourself, yeah, it's that energetic. So I know you love your music, Matt. I love having baths with essential oils. Uh, it's putting yourself in a place where you can allow yourself to receive because then you give more joyously and then you give in a way that's more in flow. And also then you're actually more connected to your intuition. And when you're connected more to your intuition, then you, um, well, you know 
much faster who is the right person to align with mm. and who are the customers and the clients to align with and when an action or a decision you might make in your business is out of alignment. So that's another reason to receive, you know, to make space because you make much better decisions that support you and the growth of your business if you give yourself that space. I did. So, uh, yeah. I did a blab just the other day yeah. with Senka from Adventure Girls on my oh, blab show. And she talked about just take five minutes a day to yeah. go outside, and yeah. And for me, I it is something that I, I said I'm going to commit to doing that. Just yeah. go, I mean, I I go outside, right? I walk the kids yeah. to school. I pick them up. Yeah. But in the middle of the day, when I'm usually working, yeah. On the computer, it's right there. My outside is right there. Go outside and just be right. And you so were going to go like, on the bee stump. Just yeah, don't don't sit on the stuff. bees at your place, but no. just be and just and you're not doing anything because you know my usual thing would be like I'll go outside, but I'll write a to do list. You know, it's like no, just go outside and be outside for just five minutes because then, like you said, you're allowing that space for other thoughts to come in or yeah. ideas or maybe some clarity or like you said, intuition around things rather than going out and still doing. That, that I think that said, Nat, what, what you're saying there, it can be challenging. I know your energy is a doing energy. So you have to find a way to be that feels connected. Like I remember when I learned to meditate, you know, a long time ago, and they just wanted you to sit like this and shut your eyes for 20 minutes. And I couldn't do that. There's no way. And I still can't do that. And I have no interest in doing that. So meditation for me is listening to a guided meditation while I'm walking. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, so for you, you know, being might be doing something that's still a process, but it might be more, ch more chillaxing for you. Like, you know, I don't knitting. You like sewing, don't you? I <laughs> you used do? to do sewing. You, do. you know what? I've got co adult coloring book. So I'm adult all sorted. Coloring book. Adult coloring book. Yeah. Because then your mind yeah. is like concentrating on the colors and not just spinning off thinking about all the things you got to do yeah because you can't just be absent without replacing it with something that you really you enjoy mm -hmm. does that make sense it, it, well it makes you present whatever brings yeah. you in whatever what brings you in it's yeah. not about doing nothing it's just whatever brings you in and I'm the same yeah. with the guided meditation I mean I'm not awesome at doing meditations but when yeah. I do them I kind of feel like I'm quite reliant on the guided meditation versus me just sitting there and and having thoughts yeah. Otherwise, because, I, because I can't. Um, yeah. I'm not disciplined enough to stay on on track of the thoughts. Like I let myself go off into yeah things that you could do. And I do you know. I think actually with alignment versus action, because of social media and technology, and that's really neat and it offers all these opportunities. But it gets into our mental space a lot, and so we can operate up here a lot. And so it is good to have tasks that take us into a more present state. And those tasks, they they're often the ones that are crafty, you know, uh, like people used to do knitting and like people used to bake bread and like you're doing these coloring, you know. So it's coming back to doing sometimes a few more simple things just to unwind. Yeah, go back to the basics. Go back to the okay, basics. So it yeah. would be good. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll open up the seat in a few minutes and yeah, see cool. if anyone wants to come in. Wants to um, ask a question. And I, yeah, I know we've got Julie and I'm not sure if Sarah's still there, but I know Fiona's there. Yeah. And to see if they want to share any thoughts, what it means to them, alignment versus action. Gosh, um, absolutely. Or ask, or ask a question. But before uh, we do that, tell us a little bit about, you've got a course coming up. Oh, sure. Yes, I'm studying a course. Uh, and well, we're starting it next week. And what we're looking at, it's for women in business who are coaches and trainers. And they want to easily fill their programs with the program, a highly desired program for that their clients want and happily pay them for. And what I find just talking to a lot of women in business is they've either created a program or they've created their packages and they're not selling. Or alternatively, they've got an idea in their heads of what that program might look like, but they haven't instigated it. And the thing is, why do you want to create a program is so that you've, you've got all this gorgeous expertise and knowledge, but you don't have much time and you need to create a framework. You need help with the shape and structure of that framework to give you more leverage. And it's actually with that more leverage that you open up time and you get more in flow, right? So that you have something rather than offering this and this and a bit of this and this and this, 
And you, Nat, you know that for me, you know, that whole journey, that can be something where you're doing too much and you get out of flow and you can't receive. So it's I've been on the journey myself. How do you create your program? The program for me is, you know, how do you create a six-week program that you easily fill your programs with a highly desired program your clients want and pay you for happily? But it's really because I feel women, they need to do business a different way. They don't have time on their side and they need to value themselves on their worth, their, their full worth, not their time. And, um, and really come back to a place where they are enough. I think, you know, saying to yourself, you are enough. And what I found with a lot of women is they don't know and they need support around creating the shape and structure of what that offering looks like. So even though I talk a lot about alignment and, you know, all of the stuff energetically, um, vibrationally, that can be a bit more woo-woo, I'm actually quite focused on that structure and shape and how that supports you. Because actually it means as a woman, if you've got some great shape and structure around your offering, then you, you have more time. You have time to serve your gift higher, time to be with your family, time to, time's the gift, right? It's not, it's not simply money, it's time. Time to speak on stage, time to connect with more people and time to get and flow and time, time to feel good. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Time to go outside and all that kind of stuff. Time, to, time, play. To, go out, time <laughs> to play with it. Yeah. So time to play with my puppy, which is in, in the gestation period at the moment. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they can find out more at Kimberly Is that yeah, right? They can find out more at Kimberly Sumner.com or if anyone wants to connect with me on Facebook, uh, Kimberly, Kimberly Sumner Happiness Blind Spot or on Twitter at Kimberly Coaches and my website's Kimberly So yeah, Excellent. connect with me. I'd love to hear from you. I do have two spots left. So if it feels like a fit and if you do want some help with creating a program, please get in touch. Excellent. And if yeah. somebody's listening to the replay, right? Because you're yeah. you're starting to, uh, next week with some some kind of prep work, but the actual yeah. call is the week after. Yeah. Actually, absolutely, Nat. The prep work is next week, um, but if they miss that, the actual course start date is the following week. So yeah. in the week beginning, the um, I think that's the 9th of May. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Excellent. Yay. All right, ladies, yeah. we've got a few minutes left. So if anybody wants to pop on and either share their experience or ask yeah. a question then go ahead. I think, what does it say? Does it say take seat, claim seat, join? What does it say for you guys? Oh, on there, what is it? Um, call in. Call Thank in. you. It says, oh, call see, in. for me, it says lock seat. So it doesn't uh -huh. say call in. I, I control yeah. the, the, the gate. So for you yeah. guys, thank so you, you Julie. Call it'll, like you just need to click call in yes. and it will show your face, which is fine. And you can either yeah. be on your phone or on your computer. So we'll just give the ladies a minute to see if they want to come on in. Any question, actually, you know, because I know a lot of women you know, on this thing of flow, hustle. What I hear from so many people, so many women is that's all well and good, but I've got so much on my to-do list. How do I manage that in the space? Of, I hear a lot um, of women saying that yeah. too. They say, I've got so much on my plate right now is what I hear a lot. Yeah, so much. There's no way. I just don't have time for that. Um, and one of the things I find, and the more I'm doing this, and this is something, you know, this is work in progress for me as well, is the more I commit to taking space in the morning for setting my intentions and energetically getting in a good space, and then what I try and do is uh, something in the evening where I do a recap on that, it helps with perspective. And because it helps with perspective, it helps with stress levels, it helps with better decision making, it helps with alignment, and more importantly, it helps with the energy you give out. When you give out good energy, then things come much more easily and readily rather than having to work really hard for them. And that's a space I no longer, you know, I've done that. So I'll be honest, I've been in that space of working really hard to make things happen. Mm. And it's, it's exhausting. Uh, it's really exhausting. So it's kind of... You know, this is something that I work on and I work on with my clients. It's sort of, it's an addition to doing the practical part. I actually think you need to do both. You can't ever work on creating shape and structure if you're not looking at, um, you know, hey, Nat, you know, I've got a beautiful analogy that's coming up. You know, if you imagine, I'm just looking for it. I think I've got a glass of water around the corner here. Hang on a moment. Okay. Here we go. I've got one. Yeah. I'll pass it to you. <laughs> you pass it to me. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> okay. So if you think of a glass of water and the water is like um, is the feminine energy and it's being in flow and, you know, you want to 
easily flow to something with no difficulty and just gently and with grace. But if you took the glass away, where would that water go? It would just fall all over the floor and it wouldn't go anywhere. And what the glass does is it holds, it's like a container. It's a container for your flow. So you actually can't be in flow and be in alignment if you don't give yourself and support yourself with good structure. Nice. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? So being in, providing yourself with structure around how you share your gorgeous knowledge and expertise is then what it offers you opportunity to have more flow and opens up time and energy for you to connect more with uh, connect more with universal energy and what you're here for and what makes you feel good. And then just then just magic happens, you know. You align with people. You have those sort of sync. What's the word? Serendipitous, uh, synchronistic. You know those moments of synchronicity where you just meet that right person who needs your service, or you can help them, and they just happen to be sitting right next to you in a conference you're at, yeah. right? And those things they just flow, and it kind of feels a bit magical, and you think, ah, oh, that was really uncanny. And those moments happen. And they happen in a very different way to the days where you wake up and you're stressed and you're rushed and you're um, giving yourself grief because you haven't achieved this and then you're in a space that you're a bit nervous and your energy is really different. You know that space, right? That's a different space. And on those days, uh, those are the days you need to make, you have to work really hard. So is, I know which day I want I to be. Let me ask you, because do you yeah. sometimes, if you're just not, like if you one day are frazzled yeah. either yeah. all day or part of the day, something, do you just decide, because one of the things, I, and you know this too, I tell yeah. my clients, if you're in a state where you're just so, you're frustrated or you're confused or you're, I think I say to them, that is not the time to put out a Facebook ad or to have a sales yeah. call or yeah. to get in touch with someone about a, a joint venture or a potential client like if yeah. that if you're in that state you need to either just allow that state to be or get yourself out of that state if you like let's say you're going to speak at an event and you're just in your yeah. in a state you need yeah. to sh shift out of that state in order to be yeah. the person that you are and to present do you know what i mean like do you ever sometimes yeah. just really give yeah. into it and feel like you know what i'm not gonna push i'm just gonna i'm just gonna clear my schedule and i'm just gonna cancel that appointment and, and get a massage like what do you do i think that's a really great and practical and on the money question that for example if you're speaking in front of 100 people who have booked to see you do you just say oh hey i'm not feeling it today i'm not going to come no i'm not suggesting that i haven't evolved so much to this point that i could do that but what I would say, if I had a presentation and I needed to be on form and I wasn't feeling it, I would clear everything out of my schedule that wasn't critical mm -hmm. and work on, as you say, filling my cup And before that. For the days where there's a sales call to make or a Facebook post or a newsletter to put out, but it could be put out the next day, I wouldn't put out those things when you're in a funk. Mm -hmm. And I used to put them out mm -hmm. and I'd be like, oh, Wednesday night's a really good night to put things out, so I must do it. And then I'd get no no traction. If that Does that make sense? Yeah. So My, my daughter's like, when? Yeah. She's at the window. When are you? I'm like, How long, Mom? How long? How long? So, cool. <laughs> so um, I love that. I totally yeah. agree. And I think so too. See, it's no, and I, what I, I love is that you, it's, it's an email and a lot of people will be thinking, oh, it's just an email. It's different than a call, but it's not like energetically. Not. Don't it's put not. it out because your negative energy is going to go out with that. Yeah. yeah. It's, and it's really weird in that space. Energy trans transmute. It doesn't matter what sort of space. So I would not do any videos if I'm feeling, it's not even if I'm feeling it's just if I'm not in an up space because I'm a bit tired, you're better off to wait till the next day. And of course, my hair has to be good. <laughs> I'm just you're cracking laughing myself at myself. Up. I'm cracking myself up. No, but energetically, it's far more. It's actually not physically often how you look. It's energetically the presence you're giving out. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be in that right space. Um, but there are times and there are moments that you are called to do something that you're just not in that energetic presence. And so all I'd say is those are the times for me, I clear everything else yeah. out and I try and get support. I call it and I like, who can I get support from? Yeah. 
Yeah. And yeah. sometimes, it, the, you know, support comes in the form of, like you said, you know, get a yeah. manicure, get a massage. But sometimes it might be a nap. Sometimes it might be going outside in nature. Sometimes yeah. it might be listening to a meditation. Or it might be a certain friend that you actually call just to be like, yeah. just to offload on, you know, and she and she can you yeah. know, help you out or give yeah. you advice or whatever. Yeah. For me, it's often calling a friend and um, just, you know, sometimes you just need to sound it out and have a different perspective. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, sometimes it's just calling it. Sometimes I, I'll be honest, the funniest moods, and I had one in the weekend, was with my husband. And it was purely because he was in this stressful mood after a week of work. And I didn't ask him. I didn't say, hey, man, I'm sensing you've got a bit of a mood on. And um, is there anything to do with me? Which is what I should have done. Because it had nothing to do with me. It was just his stress. And if I just... You know, sometimes it's about gently asking someone and just sensing something's going on. Has it got anything to do with me? Because then he would have said, no, absolutely. I'm just tired and stressed and it's been a long week. And I would have gone, oh, phew, okay, how can I support you? Rather than a day of, Arr. yeah. We worked through it. We're That's pretty so close. Good. We've been married. How long have we met and I've been together? I think 25 years or something, a long time. So. Yeah, it's time for a puppy. It's time for the take things, you got to take things to the next level of commitment. <laughs> next level of commitment, puppy. Yeah. Cool. He's going to be like the puppy's biggest fan as soon as it arrives. I reckon he's going to be the puppy's biggest fan. He's telling all the girls at his work, so he's pretty. He's on board, Matt. All right, yeah. awesome. All right, yeah. we got to yeah. we got to wrap things up. Thank yeah, wrap things up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for hey, listening. KimberlySummer.com, <laughs> go to girl social yeah. and yeah. we'll catch you next time on Blab. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Hey, guys. Great to connect. And thanks for joining us over lunch or dinner or however this is in the afternoon. And um, talk soon. Bye for now. See ya. Bye.